Hello everyone, today we're going to be taking a look at making some of our partial rendering a bit more dynamic. Now, of course, if you've used Rails for a extended period of time, you probably know about this. Uh, but there is actually an alternative to just rendering your partials and having like variables that indicate which page you're on, for example. Uh, you might do something where if you have a, uh, let's say you have a, a, a sidebar that changes based on what route you're on, you might have like a, a if statement that checks which controller action you're on inside of your code. You don't really have to do that. Uh, there is a way to just yield for some content and have like in this case, our sidebar render a different sidebar depending on which page we're on. We'll have the default one, which is for our about page here. And then we'll have a custom one for the home page or the root path because maybe we want the root to be different for God knows what reason. But we're just gonna take a look at this real quick. It'll be a pretty fast tutorial. All we really have to do is create a new Rails app and run like three commands, basically. So we're gonna go ahead and CD out of our demo. We'll do a uh, Rails new video. And hopefully I still have this saved in here. It looks like I do. So we'll create a new Rails project. We'll CD into it and we'll open it up in VS Code just like we normally do. We're also gonna be using Bootstrap for this. This is mostly just so I have like a side panel I can use without having to make some custom CSS. So I went ahead over to uh, getbootstrap.com slash doc slash 5.0. I'll have a link to this in the video description. You can also find it by Googling. And we're just gonna grab the CSS and the JS bundle and put it into our app uh, layout. So we'll come into our app, our views, our layouts, and our application.html.erb file. In here, we'll copy the CSS. And then if you're so inclined, you can also just paste the bundle in here as well, or you can put it like at the bottom if you want to. In my case, I'm just gonna leave it all in the header. So that's fine. Now let's generate a controller. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and full screen and we'll say Rails G controller pages. We'll give it a home action, a about action, and we'll give it, uh, I don't know, a contact page, just so we have a little bit more to work with. We can go ahead and run this. That looks good. Now we'll just go ahead and run a Rails S to start our server. We can now come over to localhost port 3000. We'll see this is working just fine. So let's come over to our config and our routes.rb. In here, what I want to do is change this to be to the pages home. And I just want this to be the home action, the about action, the contacts. So we'll just do the same thing uh, right here with a two pages about, and then we'll do another one for two pages contacts. So it's a little bit easier to work with. And finally, let's do a route to the pages home directory. Now, if we come over here and we refresh, we'll see this is working just fine. Let's come over to our application.html.erb and let's just wrap all of this inside of a dot container so that we have something that stands off a little bit. Let's also give it a uh, MT-5, I guess. That'll just bump it down a bit with a little bit of margin on top. Okay, so now what I wanna do is quickly create what's gonna be the uh, quite possibly one of the ugliest sidebar setups you've ever seen, but that's fine. I'm gonna create a row using Bootstrap, of course. I'll go ahead and close this div. In this row, we just want a, uh, what is it, a call-3. Go ahead and tab that over. Oops, it actually needs to be a div with a uh, class of call-3. Sorry, it's been a minute. Uh, and then in here, we want to put our sidebar. After we have our sidebar, we want to do a dot call-9, which we'll tab over. And in here is where we can yield all of our stuff if we're so inclined. We'll just do something like this. And I think we can actually close one of these divs. The rest of this should work. Uh, no, we actually need one more closing div. Something like that. I can come over here, refresh. We now have a sidebar and a main bar, if, if that's how you wanna how you wanna put it. But okay, in this sidebar, instead of just having the word sidebar, normally we would have a render for a partial. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Let's backspace this, do a render for a partial, which will be, uh, let's just make it shared slash sidebar, something like that. If we refresh, this will error out because we don't have this partial, it tells us missing partial. Of course, so we come over here, we right click on views, new folder, call this shared, and not what I just typed, uh, please don't demonetize me. And then in here we'll say, this is a underscore sidebar.html.erb. <laughs> we now refresh, there's nothing here. We can put the words sidebar in here and refresh and it should hopefully appear, there we go. Okay, so for our actual sidebar here, this is going to be the thing that we sort of render on every page. So let's think about what we want our every page to look like. We'll have a dot sidebar class here. If you want to customize this in here, we'll have a H H3 that says sidebar, something like that. Pretty simple. You can then do a UL and actually let me do a UL times three, something like this. 
Uh, and in here, we'll just do, I don't know, a, a link to home, which takes you to the root path, something like that. Uh, and then you could have like, I don't know, more words. And then we'll do uh, one more below that. More words here, something like this. Not Again, we're not really going for, for style here. This is just a really ugly, really bad uh, HTML structure here. You know how it is. Uh, so we have our, our four ULs here for some reason. We could have just used LIs, but whatever. Uh, and this is sort of our sidebar. Now, what happens if we go to our homepage uh, and we, we're on our homepage and we want to have links to our other pages? So what we could do here is if we're on, let's say, uh, the home page, we would want to have a link to, instead of the root path, we'd want to have like a link like this, where we have an about, uh, or sorry, a about, a contact, and then I guess we don't have a third one here. So we'll just get rid of this. So in this case, we would have the about path and we would have the contact path, something like that. We can refresh. We now have those. Now, the issue is if we click on one of these, it still has the about and the contact. It doesn't have a way for us to go back. So how do we uh, set this up so that if we're on, let's say our about page, we still have that link to the root path. And if we're on the root path, we can uh, just have the other links without that root path. And maybe on, maybe have some like branding for the home page. Well, to do that, we can come over to our application.html.erb file. And inside of here, we can just do a quick little check. So in the call dash three, which is our side panel, we can do a check. So we'll say if content underscore four question mark and then we'll just put the uh, home underscore sidebar something like that and then we can do a else and then we can do a end right here so if we have content for a home sidebar we'll put it right here else we're not on the home page so we'll have this other sidebar and the other sidebar in this case will be something that just has a link to the root path with more words here. The reason why I'm doing this, and this is actually gonna bother me, so I'm just gonna fix this real quick. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and come down here, close the UL, and we'll change this to a LI. I don't know why I did it like this, but uh, something like that. And I'll just copy this. Uh, so the reason why we're doing this is just so we have something to test with. Uh, of course, you'd wanna customize this a bit more if you had more of these, uh, because you don't want to uh, just have a link to the home page. You'd also wanna have like a link to the contact if you're on the about page or whatever. But you'll see how to do that by setting up the home sidebar. So in the case of having a home sidebar, what we wanna do is in here, just say yield the home underscore sidebar like that. We can come over here, we can refresh, you'll see nothing changes. But if we come over to our home page inside of app views pages and our home page, we can just real quick come in here and we can say above everything else, because we want to, this to sort of be the first thing that it sees, uh, we can just do a content for the home sidebar. We'll do a do block We can come down here and do an end block. We can just say test. We'll just put the word test in there, refresh, and now you'll see our sidebar disappears. But if we go to slash about again, our sidebar is back to the default one. So in this case, we have a custom sidebar set up right here. Now, of course, what this means is you could also create situations where you come here and you have a custom partial. So we can come in here and we can say, all right, well, I have another partial that I want to use for the home page. Uh, let's just put it in shared because I can't be bothered to think right now. I'll just say this is the home underscore sidebar .html.erb. And then inside of here, we'll put test. And then inside of here, we'll just do a render for a partial. And the partial will be, uh, what is it? Shared slash uh, home underscore sidebar is what we called it over here and refresh, come back to the home page. And now you can see that test is there. It's being rendered through this partial. This allows you to create multiple of these where it's largely just dependent on the page that you're rendering. Now, why would you want something like this as opposed to just having a custom partial that you render at the top of each of these pages? Of course, you can abstract this out, but the thing that you're kind of missing there is the ability to yield depending on the page that you're on. So if you just had a single uh, sidebar, you would then once again have to come in here and you'd have to find a way to determine the page that you're on. And in some cases, this allows you to have a situation where you have a default and then you have, uh, or you have a default right here and then you have other options you can do before this where you have like a else if, uh, I don't know, the, about, uh, or maybe a contact underscore sidebar, something like this. 
And then in here you can do a call to render or a call to yield the contact sidebar. And then in the contact page right here, wherever this is, pages contact, we can do another yield where we do a, uh, let me actually come into the homepage and just copy this real quick. Let's do this where we do for the contact sidebar. We'll grab this, paste it in here, come over here into the shared. We'll do another one, underscore contact, underscore sidebar, dot HTML, dot ERB. You come in here and your phone number is like, I don't know, one dash two, uh, three, four dash five, six, seven, eight. I don't know, something like that. Uh, obviously not a real number, but it allows you when you come over to the contact page slash contact, I think is what we called it, to list your phone number there. And none of this is done with needing to figure out what route you're on. And it's largely going to work as long as the page you're going to is still this, this HTML page. Before I used to do this uh, a couple of years ago, I probably had a, a couple of tutorials on the channel where I would, you know, do something where I check based on the controller and the action that I'm in. Uh, and it wasn't until someone pointed this out to me that I realized that there's a lot of overhead that sort of comes with that. Uh, one of the easiest examples for me was renaming the controller action for whatever reason. Uh, and then I ended up having to refactor it. Meanwhile, if I had something like this, the only time I'd really have to refactor this is either if I change the entire contents of this page or if I change like what the uh, the name of the partial is. So it's not it's not necessarily going to absolutely change your life, but there are cases where you'd want to use the content for as opposed to just rendering partials by having like conditionals inside of all of your stuff. This is also really useful for your metadata where you might need to yield for specific content. So let's say you have your title up here, which says like video for your, your web page. You can then yield for some custom metadata where each page you're on is just the title of that page. Uh, it just allows you to add some flexibility there. Same thing with like your, your tags or with uh, like the, um, the image for uh, a graph API. If you're using like Facebook or if you want to have like Twitter preview cards where you can add a image specific to that page using a similar setup where you can just render it based on what page you're on. And then in this specific page, you just have a content for the image and then you just render the image in there or include the source or whatever you want to do. But yeah, hopefully this was interesting and helpful. Uh, it's really not something I've talked about a lot on the channel, but this is something that you should probably know about. And hopefully I will see you in the next video.